Well, the decision to run the Flying Pig Marathon during severe weather continues to spark a lot of debate in the tri-state. That's right. Even runners themselves, they have differing opinions. I caught up with one Northern Kentucky woman this afternoon who says she doesn't think the decision should have been left up to the participants. The 25th annual Flying Pig was supposed to be one for the history books. Unfortunately for runners like Bethany Hansen, it's going to be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Disappointed by the whole thing? Yeah, disappointed for sure. The Bellevue mom of three set out Sunday to participate in the half marathon with a group of friends. She's run it almost every year and says while the day started out like most race mornings, that didn't last long. When did you feel a little like it may not be okay anymore? Yeah, very quickly into the race, about mile two, we were in Covington and uh, the lightning started coming down and that's when I started to get really fearful, yeah. Bethany says internally something just didn't sit right. She says on the course, while surrounded by other runners, you're also isolated in a sense, unaware of what meteorologists are seeing and even what decisions race organizers are making. So someone on a bike had said the race has been paused and it was very unclear. I had never heard that term before the race has been paused and the bike rider was not very loud and no one was getting off the course and it was hard to tell exactly what was going on. But um, my husband's boss was killed by lightning three years ago and that put a personal perspective on it for me today. I have three young children and I wanted to make sure I made it home to those kids and um, my safety was of most importance. Yeah. Bethany says with all that in mind, she made the difficult decision to stop and to step off the course. Disappointed with not only the outcome, but the way things were handled from the start. It shouldn't be overlooked how dangerous of a situation that was and how fortunate we were that everyone came out okay, but it could have been different. My husband works in safety and it's never an issue until it's an issue. So yeah, race organizers tonight, they're responding to some of that criticism, but they're also standing by their decision. Candace Hare spoke with the race's executive director and live with the very latest on that. Yes, Trisha, Megan, it's a nightmare scenario, right? Storms producing heavy rain and lightning moving through the area during a marathon, leaving those runners, those workers, and those spectators vulnerable to the elements. As we know, this happened on Sunday during the Flying Pig Marathon. So today I spoke with the race's executive director about this situation, one which some say was avoidable. It was the right decision. It worked out beautifully. Flying Pig Marathon Executive Director Iris Simpson Bush doubles down on the decision to run Sunday's race despite lightning and heavy rain moving through the tri-state. Despite Fox 19 now Chief Meteorologist Steve Horsmeyer's assertion that the forecast consistently called for storms in the area days in advance. And then by 10 to 11 a.m., I think we run the threat of getting some lightning along the course. Simpson Bush calls their choice to run the race an 11th hour decision. Weather is unpredictable for the meteorologist. You know the joke or the story or the fact. 50% of the time they're wrong, so you can never be sure what Mother Nature is going to do. When the lightning did move into the area, were you ever concerned or did you feel at peace with that decision all the way through? <laughs> I was frightened the whole time. At no time until that storm passed, and thank goodness it was fast moving, but I was, I, I will not be disingenuous about that. I was frightened and concerned the whole time. I knew in my heart that based on the facts we had, it felt the right thing to do. Simpson Bush tells me she is now focusing on the smiling faces she saw across the finish line at the end of Sunday's race, and that while they will learn from this experience, she cannot guarantee a different decision will be made should a similar situation unfold in the future. The facts seem to be that it was the right time to go, the, the best, the opportune time to go based on the way the weather was um, coming through. And that's what we did, and uh, it seems to have worked worked very well. So in hindsight, I wish I didn't have to make it. I hope I don't have to make it again, but I do think it was the right one. Now, Simpson Bush, she told me that this was a collective decision, but that she did take full responsibility for it. She also added that many of those first responder groups, she specifically mentioned police were on a time limit. So she said that did play a role in them not delaying the race. 
So when I talked to Steve Horsmeyer a little bit earlier, he said there was no doubt that before that race started, there was lightning on the radar, and he questioned whether or not it even should have started. Did you ask her? I mean, did she even think about not starting it at all based upon that? She, she again, she reiterated it was an 11th hour decision, she said. She said they kept monitoring it all the way through. But, I mean, as you heard there, it, it felt like she cast doubt on the reports altogether, right? Mm -hmm. It did. Like it was kind of one of those, um, sometimes they get it wrong. Exactly. So we're going to push. Okay. All right. So let's bring in um, Steve on this. So uh, Steve Horsmeyer, I know that you sent out one uh, tweet because you were not happy whatsoever about the decision. Well, I woke up Sunday morning and I went to see the start of the marathon. And the first thing I did was take a look at radar on my phone. And then I turned on the TV and I thought, oh my God, they're starting this with this coming in. Now here is what we saw. Now this is archive data and it doesn't have the lightning on it for contractual obligations. You can just show the radar. But right here is uh, downtown Cincinnati and you can see that just slightly after the race began, those storms rolled into the tri-state. Now we can show you a still of what that looked like and here's what it looks like. Now, all these plus signs are lightning. Great American Ballpark in downtown right here. And you can see basically the entire course just a short time after the start of the race was under lightning and dangerous lightning. Now, the thing is, this is not a forecast situation. As she mentioned, this is a nowcast situation. We've been doing this for the Reds for a decade now, and this is exactly what we do. You time this out. It looked like it was going to get here just after the race began. It did. It did. It's a very dangerous situation, and uh, they've got to have a policy next time that happens because this was not a good decision. Steve, thanks. Uh, Megan, I, I know you're still standing by. I don't know if we still have the shot, but I want to ask you one more thing. Did she, she mentioned about they were going to take this into account next year. Did they say the possibility of changing policy next year? So I specifically asked her if they would change possibility or the possibility of what would happen next year. And she said they're always learning. They're always growing from experiences. But she seemed to say this was a good decision. She felt like it was the right decision. So is that a no? I'm going to say it was a no. That's what I gathered. Okay. Thank you. All right, Candace, and for our full coverage of the Flying Pig and the decision to continue the race as scheduled and also all that reaction, you can head to our website right now. That is fox19now.com or you can also download our free Fox 19 Now app.